We just got our arm on these arms! Yeah! <laughs> we just crossed the border into Ibra. Enfant! I know a photographer from France who does like um, nomadic photography tours and this year he was going to Iran and he invited me along um, to come on the trip with him. And as I had just finished my studies, I thought it would be an amazing opportunity. محصول زیمنش هستم از تهران بعد شیش ساله که پارکور کار میکنم واسه ما خیلی تفریح وجود نداره حالا خ... یه جوری پارکور هم واسه همون تفریح میشه هم ورزش میشه هم خالی کردن هیجان و رسیدن به اون قدرتی که داره م... یه قدرت خاصی احساس میکنم بهت میده سلام من مسیح علی نجادم و این هم 124 امین برنامه یه تبلت من مسیح علی نجاد ام ان ایرانیان جورنالیست و اکتیویست ا کمپینر اگینست کمپالسری حجاب اند وومنز رایت یه دختر فقیر خودش خودش رو نمایندگی بکنه و بگه من حتی اگر فقیر بودم الان حق دارم با صدای بلند از حق و حقوق زنانم دفاع بکنم So I live in New York now but I grew up in a small village north of Iran to a traditional family people who we met in the country were like a lot more excited to see tourists and lot like haven't seen tourists before. We stayed with that family for two or three nights and we ate dinner with them every night and they let us, you know, they let us really into their lives and we drove around on their truck and we like herded their cattle and we danced around to music and, you know, they taught us their traditional dances and it was just, it was like three days when we were just this huge family. All I remember from my childhood was um, me and my brother, and um, I was envying at his freedom because for me as a girl, I was not allowed to have the same freedom as my brother. He was the one allowed to enjoy himself, you know, jumping to the river, enjoying swimming, running freely and, and feel the wind through his hair, you know, riding a bicycle. Salam Asi, ma asker mansha film girem. Ano, ma nam saikhan Tehranim, va do charkh sawar herfein dige do charkh sawar jo zia zendegi mun shode. 
کیش بودیم که این خبر رو شدیدیم که آقای خامنه ای چی گفتن در مورد دوچرخ سواری ما ببینید ما الان به خاطر جمهوری اسلامی رو و به خاطر قانون اجباری هجاب نمیتونیم بریم از دریا استفاده کنیم نه به هجاب اجباری نه ولی عوضش آقایون رو نگاه کنین همه خیلی راحت دارن از این آب و از این نعمت خدا دادی استفاده کنیم سیستم سیستم مرد سالاریه به خاطر اینکه حمایت نمیشه بعد جایی برای آموزش اینا نداریم مخصوصا خانم ها خانم ها که اصلا جایی واسه آموزش ندارن یه سری باشگاه هایی هستش که هیچ مربی که با سواد باشه اونجا وجود نداره واسه همین خانم ها واسه اینکه واقعا پاکو یاد بگیرن مجبورن که تو پارک شروع کنن حالا اولی که با آقایون شروع میکردن خیلی هم مشکلات امنیتی و این چیزا و پلیس و اینا داشتن They didn't have to worry too much. They could have a little bit more freedom, but as a woman, like we really had to make sure that the moment we crossed the border into Iran, that we were wearing appropriate clothing. She was like loose fitting clothing, no jeans, like our tops had to be long, um, long sleeve, neck covered, hair covered. Now we're just waiting at the bus stop. No idea when the bus is going to come, but hopefully one comes at some point today. <laughs> and we are going into the center of Shiraz. We just kind of instantly saw that all the women were at the back and the men were at the front. That's just how it was. Like, the rebellion in me just wanted to like walk up and sit at the front and see what happened, but I didn't do that. It was the first time in my life I was like, oh, as a woman, I can't do that. And that was an interesting experience. There were like tea houses, for example. Sometimes there are men only tea houses where men just go to kind of drink tea and smoke shisha and women aren't allowed in there. And I think there was one uh, that the boys on the trip went into and we couldn't go into because we were females. There are some parts, like entrances into mosques Women have to enter on one side and men have to enter on another side. So when I was in Shiraz, yeah, we had to be fully covered up. Like they give you a towel, like a, a sheet and you cover up everything and you have to enter on one side and the men enter on another side and they don't have to cover up like what you do as women. Um, so things like that sometimes. In, in the mosque, women are only allowed on one side and men are only allowed on another side. <laughs> Police in Iran announced that within a year, 3.6 million women were warned, stopped in public, got arrested, and sent to the court. بریم سراغ زنی که در ایران به جرم شرکت در یک تجمع نه به جرم شرکت در یک مهمانی خانوادگی مختلط و به جرم نوشیدن شراب محکوم شد به شلاق باورتون نمیشه خانم علی جان اون لحظه که در رو با لگد باز کردن در ورودی ویلا رو با لگد باز کردن و و اینکه ما همه یه جوری با هم فامیل بودیم من و خواهرم بودیم با شوهرامون پسرم و شوهرم با خانم با هم دیگه میرقصیدیم و سه شب تو بازداشتگاه بمونی و روز چهارم به کارم به پرونده ما به اصطلاح رسیدگی کنم برامون نفری 74 ضربه شلاق تعزیری بریدن چادر یه خانم دیگه اونجا بود چادر اون خانمو گرفت و داد به من گفت چادر این خانمو بپیچ دورت و شروع کرد به زدن 
من خیلی یادم نمیاد به خاطر اینکه شلاق پنجم ششم که خودم از شدت درد افتادم و یک نیمکت رو مثلا میگن اینجا هستین باعث مثلا اذیت ما میشینی و حتی یه سری از پارک ها ممنوع شده پارکور و کلا با لباس پارکور وارد بشی بیرونت میکنه <تصفيق> One day when we were driving about an hour of Shiraz and we had we were in the car and I mean we were living in our cars we were sleeping in our cars so our cars in in respect were our own homes you know what I mean so we were in the car and we had taken our wilds off you could see through the window obviously we had a hair out my friend and I and we got stopped by the police and they were kind of like You know, if you don't respect our country, don't come here, you have to have your hair covered. And we put our bars back on and we kept them on and we made sure that we had them on even when we were in our car, even when we were in our home. The Islamic Republic of Iran is the only country that forced not only Iranian people to wear hijab, but all non-Iranian tourists, female politicians, female athletes, female actress. All female who goes to my country, my beautiful country, they will be forced to wear hijab. There are non-Muslim women inside Iran. We have Jews, we have Christians, we have, you know, people who do not believe in any religion, but they are forced to wear hijab as well inside Iran. So this is not an internal matter. As far as the government of Iran forcing all women around the world to wear hijab, this is a global issue. When we talk about hijab, we don't talk about a piece of cloth or a small issue. We talk, we talk about the ideology behind it. We talk about the philosophy behind it. We talk about, you know, those government who use the hijab to oppress women. We talk about the most visible symbol of oppression against women. The educational system in Iran tried to brainwash us. And they did. They were quite successful. When I was young, I used to think that, you know, I'm gonna die. And then this hair was like, if it was out, I was told that I'm gonna be hanged by this hair. And I, they tried to make us feel guilty. We used to hear that, you know, the earthquake happened. It's your fault. Because you don't cover your hair, so the earthquake happened. The river runs dry just because of you not wearing a proper Islamic hijab. Every time when I was, wanted to enjoy myself, I was like, oh my God, no, I'm going to go to hell. I remember that uh, from the age of seven, we had a special religious teacher in our school telling us that how you have to, you know, protect yourself from boys. I mean, don't show your hair. Otherwise, boys cannot control themselves. So, you know, telling us that it's your problem if you're being raped, if you're being harassed by men. It's your fault if a man, you know, touch your body because you show your hair to them. سلام عرض می کنم خدمت همه شما خب شما یه کمپینی را انداختین و آزادی هجاب رو مطالبه می کنین و من حرفی که دارم ایناست شما ممکنه بگین که آقا ما می خواهیم هر جوری دلمون می خواهد همونطور لباس بپوشیم و آقای خودشون رو کنترل کنن حرف شما مثل این که شما بگین ما می آیم یه غذای خیلی خوشمزه رو می پذیم توی جمعی که خیلی از آدم ها هستن و هیچ کسی هم اجازه نداره از این. Your eyes, beautiful color. Mina, 
In Iran, you don't have the choice, and everyone, everyone is kind of equal, and you just wear everything. So even though I was a tourist, it wasn't that bad. I felt more comfortable, like having to wear that in that country. I wanted to see what it was like for them to have to manage to cover your hair all the time, or to if your it falls off, what to do in public, or go to the toilet, like you know, in the places where there's not real toilets, and you have to have your, all this loose clothing, and you. Know, Things falling off, and we've got scarves and everything's hanging around, and it's hot. One veil is falling off. It always falls off. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I look really beautiful. <laughs> and the women on the farms actually wear these dresses every single day, and they do all the work out on the farm and in the home, and they wear these dresses. I'm wearing four skirts, four layers of skirts, plus a long sleeve top, plus the headpiece, plus the hair. It wasn't something that I was like, oh, I want to leave the country because I have to wear this hair scarf. But yeah, I wanted to take it off all the time. I wanted to have my hair out. I, I didn't like what I looked like with it on. You know, like that's such a superficial Western thing. Like I didn't like my clothes with it on. I was like, oh, it doesn't match my outfit or I look chubby or my hair doesn't look cool. Or, you know, in photos, I'm just like, I have no hair. Like it just was, it just wasn't, yeah, it, was, yeah, it wasn't, I wouldn't choose to wear it, like, you know, if I didn't have to. people that we met they would invite us into their homes and you know they would tell us like you know you can take your scarves off uh, we don't mind it's it's we understand you know you're in our home be comfortable wear what you want do what you want i grew up in a poor family and for me, talking about personal freedom, it comes after, you know, the main issue in the family. Like when I was telling my mom that why Ali can ride a bicycle, not me, I used to hear, shh, we have to think how we're going to help, you know, your father to, to, you know, to make bread, to make food. And then, shh, because of war. When your brothers got injured during the war, you have to talk about them, not talking about riding your bicycle or showing your hair. And then again, shh, because of sanction, don't, don't talk about personal freedom. The Western government might take advantage and apply more sanction on you. And then again, shh, now the moderate president is in power. So don't talk against this because the conservative, the fundamentalist might get advantage of that. So keep silent. And I don't understand now in the West, why they say, shh, this is not the right time because of Donald Trump, because of Islamophobia? You know, for whole my life, I keep hearing, shh, this is not the right time. But this is stupid because every time is the right time to talk about your body, to talk about your personal right, to talk about your freedom. <laughs> داده بودم خیلی کامنت منفی داشت خیلی ناراحت شدم مثلا یه سری اومد از نظر مذهبی یه سری اومد دادن نوشته بودن که مثلا این چه لباسیه میپوشی میای ویدیو میذاری مثلا چهار تا پسر نگات کنن ولی خب الان خیلی بهتر شده مثلا سر این آخرین کلیپی که دادم نه اتفاقا اکثریت تشویق کردن اکثریت گفتن مثلا خیلی خوبه ما شاءالله مثلا افتخار میکنیم مثلا همچین خانم ها مثلا دنبال همچین راه هایی هم میرن و اینا
همسایه طبقه اولمون یه پیرزنی هستن توی حیات خلوت در روش بسته میشه و گیر میکنه شروع کرد داد زدن که کمک کمک مشکل قلب و اینا هم داشت من تا صداشو شنیدم سعی لباس پوشیدم رفتم تو حیات از دیوار حیات اون بالا رفتم رفتم رو بالکن بعد از بالکن رفتم با پردر پنجره شون و آشپزخونه شون باز کردم دیگه خودم از پنجره آشپزخونه مثلا انداختم توی خونه و رفتم تو خونه و دیگه پیرزن نجات دادم من مادرم اینو خیلی موافق پارکور نبودن ولی خب مثلا بعد اون مامانم هم به همه میگفت دخترم پارکور کاره دخترم پارکور کاره We were used to being, um, you know, a face morality police. But nowadays, in Iran, women learned to do, you know, civil disobedience, questioning the morality police, shouting, screaming, uh, videoing them, filming them, exposing them. But during my teenagehood, we didn't have mobile phones. Now women of Iran using their mobile phone as their weapon. <laughs> بگو دیگه اجارت داری بگو خب این ورشو این ورشو رو بهت بگم امروز توی اوتوبان ماشین گشت نیروی انتظامی به من فرمانه ایستاد تا دید رو سریع سفید سرمه شیشه های ماشینم دودی بود جریمه کرد منو تکسم بود رو بابا ما بله؟ آره با دو چی کار میکنی؟ چشم چی کار میکنی؟ چی کار گفتی میکنی؟ چک میزنی زیر گوشم؟ گفتی چک میزنی زیر گوشم؟ دست فنا رفت. آه. پارک کارهای دیگه همه ویدیوهاشون رو این اینستاگرام میذارن و من وقتی بخوام اونا رو دنبال کنم خب بهتر اینجا این اینستاگرامه و همینجور کشور خودم همینطور چون اکثریت از اینستا استفاده میکنه. بیشتر دوست دارم که با من یه خانوم یه قدرت خیلی خوبی و نمایش بدم دوست دارم بدونن که خانوم میتونن به یه درجه خیلی بالایی برسن اگه بخوان مثلا یه جوری این جا افتاده که آقای قدرت رو زورشون زده ولی خب دوست دارم نشون بدم ولی اگه خانوم ها کار کنن اونجوری نیست که خیلی اختلاف شدیدی بخوام با آقای داشته باشن Individual women became their own leader. Every individual woman became their own media, their own storytellers. That is why for the government of Iran, controlling the society is not easy. They might be able to arrest me or a journalist or a woman, woman rights activist, but they cannot control the whole society. That is why I strongly believe that the change only come true women inside Iran. White Wednesdays. White Wednesdays. Salon. امروز یه چهارشنبه دیگه است و من به همراه دخترم و مادرم اومدیم تا از چهارشنبه سفید حمایت کنیم. با لباس سفید میایم بیرون، با نماد سفید میایم بیرون که بگیم ما خشونت رو قبول نداریم ما حسف هم دیگر رو قبول نداریم همه دخترها خانم ها آقایونی که با این کمپین همراه هستن ما قطر قطر با هم دریا میشیم تا وقتی که سکوت I tried to speak to people about the human rights issues and things like stoning or the fact that homosexuality is illegal and things like that and they would just kind of say that they don't agree with they don't agree with that either and that they don't align themselves with the government. بهتره این قصه برنامه من هیچی نگم. چون چند روزه که شما مردم هر چی که تو این 40 سال اینجا تو گلوتون گیر کرده رو ریختید بیرون. Oh, 
Iran protest was oppressed by the government of Iran. They killed more than 20 people. They arrested more than 4,000 people. But I have to say that the, the movement is still there. سره به سال همین طور که میبینین این خانم رفته اون بالا اعتراض چهارشنبه سفید گرفته یه بیشتر از این نمیتونم توضیح بدم Among them there was a picture which became the face of the protest was about a girl who was not even involved in Iran protest It was just one day before the protest the girl took off her headscarf and put it on a stick and like a flag her white shawl was like a flag she was just waving peacefully her white shawl to protest compulsory hijab. Where is she now? She got arrested. We don't know who this woman is. And now what is happening with her? Where is she now? And what is happening with her? And I want to tell the other women from this time that they will be able to put their hands on their hands and put their hands on their hands and put their hands on their hands and put their hands on their hands. که در هر جایی منو میشنوه در ایران هر زن معمولی که منو میشنوه باور کنه که میتونه یک روزی از تلویزیون خونه خودش صداش رو به گوش همونایی برسه که براش قانونگذار و قدار کش بودن واقعا دوست دارم که خانمای کشورم به این سمت بیان و مردم کشورم کلا دوست دارم آینده خیلی خوبی و چه کار واسه ایران بده I miss my family I haven't seen them for for years for nine years I get homesick a lot it's not easy just being away from your mother from your father from your brothers it's not easy if the government of Iran give me the same platform that I have here, I want to go back to my country. And I want to be the voice of my people, um, you know, from there.